Good afternoon. On behalf of Chief Patterson and Dominic Nutter, who is the Director of the Emergency Communications Director, uh, I'd like to welcome you to the Raleigh Wake Emergency Communications Center. Uh, typically, we hold this event at the Southwest District, but if you haven't noticed, there's a fair going on, so uh, we figured you'd enjoy not being stuck in that traffic. Uh, Chief Patterson will be discussing our 2023 third quarter crime statistics today, in addition to RPD's efforts at curbing crime throughout Raleigh and increasing our community engagement efforts. Uh, joining her today is Deputy Chief Scott Oosterhout, Majors Harrison, Majors Ford, Major Boyce, and Major Knuckles. Uh, at the end of her comments, we will take a few questions related to the information presented today. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Patterson. Thank you, Lieutenant Borneo. And good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the third quarter 2023 crime briefing. This police department is committed to transparency and ensuring that the community is informed on what is occurring in our city from a crime and also from a community engagement perspective. Just as with other quarterly crime briefings I've conducted, I will be sharing crime statistics for the quarter, which covers the months of August, I'm sorry, July, August, and September. July, August, and September. We have provided a handout for you with the current crime statistics and related information. I must say that we have had a very busy third quarter, which is not unusual given the months that it covers. Historically, when it is warm outside and the days are long, we tend to see those upticks in criminal behavior. We did finish the quarter with an overall reduction in part one violent crime and an overall increase in property crimes. I will begin with violent crime. With respect to homicides, there were 13 for the third quarter versus 15 over last year. Of the 13, one was ruled to be a self-defense case and we made arrests in 10 of the 13, which is a 77% clearance rate, which is very good. Nine of the cases involved firearms, and in six of the cases, the suspect and the victim were known to one another. Only in one of the cases did we see it occur near or at a nightclub. We are continuing to work very closely with the district attorney's office to ensure that when a suspect is identified in these types of cases, that an arrest is made quickly to prevent further harm to the community. Looking at robberies, in the third quarter of the year, 21 businesses reported a robbery compared to 17 in the third quarter of 2022. There were two repeat locations that were victimized. One was on the 3700 block of Tryon Road and the second on the 4400 block of New Bern Avenue in which we made an arrest in one of those cases. With respect to our personal robberies, there were 93 reported for the quarter compared to 88 last year. And when it comes to robberies in general, we just want to keep reminding the public, our businesses as well as individuals, to be aware of your surroundings and to report any suspicious activity that you may observe. Moving to aggravated assaults, which is one of the areas of great concern that I talk about all the time, especially when it involves firearms. For the third quarter, there were 319 reported aggravated assaults versus 270 for the previous year, which is an 18% increase. Nearly half of the aggravated assaults committed involved in firearm, which is very problematic. With those cases, there were four juveniles that were, that were charged in those instances. In 29% of the cases, um, they were domestic related where the suspect and the victim were known to each other, and we made arrests in 26% of the aggravated assaults that were reported. Turning to property crime, in the third quarter, we saw a noticeable increase in motor vehicle thefts, 501 vehicles were stolen during the quarter compared to 343 over the same time period in the previous year. Even though it has slowed down some, we are still seeing where Kias and Hondas are being stolen. For the quarter, there was 140 total that were stolen in Raleigh, 76 Hondas and 64 Kias. We want to continue to amplify and to encourage the public that if you have one of these vehicles, that you contact your dealership or visit the company's website for more information on the software update that restricts the operation of the vehicle's ignition system. Those, that software update is available free of charge all the way until August 1st of 2024. Also too, for a extra layer, an extra layer of security, our police districts have steering locks that you can get for free. You can just visit one of our district stations and we will provide one for you. And if we don't have one at that station, we will make sure that we get one to you. Along with cars being stolen, firearms 
are also being stolen out of vehicles. It is important that I remind all our gun owners to properly secure your firearms. I cannot stress it enough. In fact, I say it, I think, at every crime meeting that we have. Please do not leave your firearms unattended or unsecured in your vehicles. A few weeks ago, we saw a rash of firearms being stolen in the Briar Creek area um, from vehicles. And we know specifically that that's what the offenders were targeting were firearms. So again, please do not leave those firearms unattended or in your vehicles. For the, for, for the third quarter, a total of 162 firearms were stolen from vehicles in Raleigh, which is a 40% increase over the same time period last year. Year to date, there have been 416 stolen firearms from vehicles. These firearms we know often get in the wrong hands of individuals and we want to prevent that as much as possible. In addition to the crime numbers provided, I'd like to talk some about our proactive engagements to keep our downtown and our Glenwood South areas safe. That has been a focus for us in the last couple months. Um, a few weeks ago, my staff and I provided an update to the Safe, Vibrant, Healthy Community Committee on the state of downtown and our business core, as well as Glenwood South. During the third quarter, we increased our patrols and emphasis on criminal behavior in, the, in both the downtown and the Glenwood South areas. We have taken a zero tolerance approach to address crime. And in the last five weeks in our downtown business core, we have made 177 physical arrests for a number of different offenses. We've charged 71 felony offenses, 285 misdemeanor offenses. We've also charged 59 trespassing violations. We've taken 97 case reports. We have served 65 warrants and we have secured 18 juvenile petitions. In addition to that, we have also made 18 ACORNS referrals, trying to get services for those who are unhoused and who need them most. Again, the downtown business core is a concern for us. We wanna make sure that we have adequate resources for it. With that, we have increased the number of officers in our transit unit, and we have also made investments in more cameras for increased eyes and ears in that area. In the Glenwood South area, we have devoted additional resources as well on the weekends where we're seeing most of the activity. We've altered the traffic patterns to prevent cruising and traffic bottlenecking, which prevents emergency vehicles from getting in if they need to get to that area. We have also cracked down on motorcycle clubs, loitering in parking lots and doing burnouts. We've also committed patrols to riding the decks um, to prevent car break-ins and illegal use and abuse. From our efforts alone in Glenwood South, there has been a 325% increase in illegally possessed firearms. Also, too, there's been an increase of 275% in physical arrests and a 33% decrease in loud noise complaints. As we continue efforts to keep our community safe, of course, we always encourage our residents to utilize Raleigh Crime Stoppers to report crime. We offer cash payouts for credible tips that leads to an arrest. Historically, during the holiday season is a time when we start to see increases in larcenies and robberies, and we want to make sure that we're holding offenders accountable, and so the public's tips help us to do that. So we are asking you, if you see anything, if you hear anything, please use Raleigh Crime Stoppers. You can call us at 919-996-1193, or you can visit us online at raleighcrimestoppers.org. I'm very pleased that during the third quarter, we received 216 Crime Stoppers tips. We love that kind of information, so please keep sending it to us. We've done a lot of work in the third quarter, and we're continuing to do that work now. We will, for the year, continue to make sure that our officers are in the right places to affect crime and to keep our community safe. I want to thank you for joining us today, and at this time, my staff and I will open it up to any questions that you may have of us related to the information that I have covered today. Harley. My name is Carly Haynes with WRAL. Uh, when it comes to violent crime, what percentage is random versus targeted? So I don't have an exact number for you. Um, it appears, though, just looking overall at our numbers anecdotally, that most of the crime that we're seeing, the suspects and the victims are known to each other. However, there are times we do have random instances, but as we investigate it more, what we're finding is oftentimes the victim and the suspects are known to each other. Hi, Bilal Mohammed. Uh, hi, Bilal Mohammed, CBS 17. 
You spoke about um, the efforts downtown and on Glenwood South, that you're upping presence there. Um, last month at the city council meeting, we heard city leaders say they're looking into private uh, security and police in that downtown area. What are your thoughts on that, and is there a reason why um, they feel, why RPD alone can't handle that? Sure, and I did discuss that at, at that SVHC meeting that we had, um, and I've stated publicly, I don't see that private security being a force or a group of people that's going to hinder the job that we're doing there. Actually, I believe that they can supplement what we are doing. I want to be clear that private security is not going to replace RPD officers. I've already stated today that we are increasing the number of officers that we are putting in our transit unit in that area, or our Go Raleigh station. So we'll continue to do that, but I think that we can work collectively to be able to impact the crime that we're seeing. Go ahead, sir. Hi, I'm Josh Schaefer, News and Observer. Can I clarify one figure? You mentioned 177 arrests in the downtown business court. Does that include Redwood South or is that? No, that is just the business that's core around the Go Raleigh station and the downtown business area. And that's in the last five weeks. Five weeks, excellent. And then how many vacancies are there within RPD at the, at the moment? Right, right, so you guys always ask me that question. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So we're sitting at 82 vacancies. And we have a recruit class that's going to be starting in January. So we're hoping to cut, cut that number down significantly. to me the zero tolerance approach what does that look like and also how many officers are you guys adding to the transit area sure so the zero tolerance really just includes us anytime there's any kind of criminal activity or behavior in the downtown we're taking action against that uh, we have educated the public to let them know to let individuals know that we are going to be in the downtown area in the Glenwood South area in our whole community period and so we will educate by giving people warnings initially, but we are taking an approach where if you are committing crime in those areas, we will take enforcement action. With respect to your question on the transit unit, we have added some more officers. Um, I can't give you the exact number, but we have added to our unit. Go ahead, Denise. Um, you're also wanting to know about the private security officers. What type of capacity, what can they do? Can they make arrests? Like, what does that actually look like? Yeah, so the details of that have not been worked out yet. I know that um, the city, we're working through that to figure out exactly what that's going to look like, but we don't know at this time. Do we know how many officers? We do not. One or two more. Go ahead, Carly. This is just a clarification question as well. Um, the increase in confiscated guns in Glenwood itself, is that an increase from this time compared to the previous year or compared to the previous quarter? This is just overall compared, and, and just overall period, since we have act, started our enforcement um, actions down there, given about two months now, this is what we have collected. Go ahead, go ahead. And I'm sorry for not clarifying that. Okay, you got it. Oh, just a lot. It's CBS 17 again. Um, I see here, you know, motor vehicle theft, and you talk about these guns stolen from cars. Um, just car break-ins in general, is that reflected in these numbers? And if not, can you kind of shed some light on what you're seeing? You know, over the summer, we know it was a really big topic here. Anecdotally, it seems like they did calm down, but I'm curious what you're seeing. Sure. The numbers that you have in front of you are just motor vehicle thefts in Raleigh. Um, car break-ins, that continue to be an area that we struggle in as well. Um, and I don't have the exact quarterly numbers for you. We certainly can get that to you. But it continues to be an area that we are looking at and that we are making sure that we're putting resources around. Um, again, our apartment complexes, hotels, areas where there's a lot of vehicles being parked is where we're seeing those car break-ins. Um, we continue to encourage the public to not leave valuables in their vehicles at all. If you can, park your vehicle in a well-lit area to help prevent um, car break-ins. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate your time.